Where is Australia headed as a country? Are we headed in the right direction? Are we moving away from fossil fuels? Are we doing what we need to do? Actually, yes, we are. A lot of naysayers have been saying that wind, solar and batteries are going to collapse in Australia, that um, we need nuclear and that it's not heading in the right, Australia is not heading in the right direction. That, um, I've said many times I believe that that was false. Fortunately, I got this one right. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. It's Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Australia has notched up a remarkable run, says Renew Economy, on big battery investment in the first quarter of 2025, with six projects worth $2.4 billion and a combined 1,510 megawatts of capacity and more than five gigawatt hours of storage duration reaching financial close in just three months. I did a, a member-only video on the channel talking about the opportunities in this industry. Many of you have emailed me, contacted me saying, I want to get into this industry. I know it's going to grow. I know there's huge potential. What do I, what part of the industry do I get into? This is what I, this is what I recommend. In some way, the battery storage industry, whether that's residential or commercial, that is the fastest growing industry here. And it's absolutely exploding. This is only the tip of the iceberg though. New quarterly data from the Clean Energy Council as per Renew Economy details a flying start to what promises to be a massive year for batteries. As investment dollars flow to both standalone battery energy storage systems and to hybrid projects with batteries included alongside massive wind and solar farms. This is the second best quarter result on record in terms of energy output ever in Australia's history, says the report, and the best annual start for new storage projects on record, and all with the uncertainty of a federal election thrown into the mix. You would, right, we had, a, we had an election here in Australia in the first quarter of this year. One side of the government, which a lot of people were concerned, I was concerned would get elected, a lot of people thought they would, was saying, we're gonna scrap a lot of these renewable energy projects, we're gonna cancel a lot of them, we're going to just build massive nuclear power plants. It'll take us 15 years and we're going to spend literally $200 billion on those. That's what they said. So you would think amid all this uncertainty that these projects would be paused, they put them on hold, they'd wait, they'd wait until the election was over to decide whether, they're going to, whether or not they're going to finance them. That's not what happened. It might have been in the case of some of them, but fortunately, so many projects have been given the green light and received the actual funding. It's great to see the really high levels of investment we've seen over the past couple of years continue, said CEC Chief Policy and Impact Officer Aaron Wood last week. Wind and solar combined with energy storage is the lowest cost form of electricity generation in the world. And by installing more battery storage projects across the country, Australians can get the biggest benefits from renewable energy through cheaper, cleaner, more reliable power. So far this year, on average, I've had my batteries installed by Resync Solar. I'll put a link in the description below if you want to check them out. They've installed a system. It uses Anchor batteries and it's been fantastic. Now in Australia, there's a $2.3 billion stimulus for batteries. You can get a massive discount on your battery batteries being installed. In, in New South Wales, where I am, huge discounts. It's an absolute no-brainer if you have solar now to get batteries. So I'll put a link in the description to them. But this is going to drive massive amounts of battery installations at a residential level as well here. So what I'm saying is the first quarter of this year has been great. The last quarter of this year is going to be far, far bigger than this. The battery funding gold rush builds a momentum from 2024 with the CEC's latest annual stock take of Australia's clean energy progress, revealing a massive 500% uptick in financial commitments to large scale renewable generation from 1.5 billion in 2023 to $9 billion in 2024. At the risk of sounding like I'm repeating myself, I'm going to repeat myself. This is a gold rush. $1.5 billion in 2023, $9 billion in 2024. For the numbers that I've seen, it looks like it'll be over $15 billion in 2025. So possibly even $20 billion. I mean, these numbers are massive. The CEC says this is the highest single year of new financial commitments to large-scale generation since the boom of 2018 at $8.4 billion. 
But when investment in utility scale storage is included, it gives 2024 the title of largest wave of clean energy investment in Australia's history. But this year it will be far bigger than last year. CEC Chief Kane Thornton says the biggest spend on, on renewables reflects improving economic conditions after multiple years of inflation affected costs and materials, but it also reflects the improving policy landscape. You need the right policy. You need the right government in place. On this front, Thornton gives a nod to Federal Labor's expanded capacity investment scheme, which announced 19 winners of its first round of tenders in late 2024. It is too early to say the scheme is fully delivering, but the early signs are very positive, Thornton said in a message. Investment needs certainty. We're seeing more certainty. And while the two gigawatts of total of new large-scale renewable energy generation capacity added to the grid in 2024 is well below the six gigawatts a year rate required to replace Australia's coal by 2030, Thornton says the increase in projects reaching financial close is cause for optimism that this level of development is achievable. In other words, this year, we're going to see what we need to see in order for Australia to be heading in the right direction to be able to get rid of our coal power plants by 2030 or 2032. Right now, there is a total of 59 large-scale generation projects with a combined capacity of 9.9 gigawatts under construction at the end of 2024, up from 56 and 7.5 gigawatt in 2023. But by the end of this year, that number will have skyrocketed. 39 of those projects were large-scale solar farms, up from 38 in 2023. 18 were wind farms, up from 13 in 2023. The two remaining were biomass projects. Now, that doesn't include battery storage. 38 large-scale batteries were under construction at the end of 2024, up from 27 at the end of 2023, which was up from 19 in 2022. The combined capacity, though, which is really the important number here, of those 38 projects will be 8.7 gigawatts slash 23.3 gigawatt hours, up from 5 and 12 in 2023. In other words, capacity of those batteries being installed this year will be double what we saw last year or nearly double, you're looking at 23.3 versus 12. That's an enormous increase. And I think from the numbers that I've seen, capacity installations in 2026 will be doubled again at around 45 gigawatt hours. Now, the report says the five utility-scale battery storage projects were connected to the grid in 2024 with a combined capacity of 690 megawatts slash 1,677 megawatt hours. In the final three months of the year alone, though, a record-breaking more than one gigawatt hours of battery projects came online in a single quarter for the first time in Australia's history. The Range Bank Massive Battery in Victoria and the Colley Battery Stage 1 in Western Australia. There's a few stages left to go. As for the big batteries making up the big numbers for the first quarter of 2025, these include Energy Australia's four-hour Woorine battery energy storage system in Victoria. And in addition to that, Quinbrook Brook Infrastructure Partners in January sealed a $722 million debt finance deal for its massive supernode project in southeast Queensland, which will be one of the biggest batteries in global history at 800 megawatts slash 2,000 megawatt hours. Now, I won't continue to bore you with all the other projects going on here in Australia. I know that Many battery projects are being installed in China. Massive numbers. We're seeing an enormous increase similar in China to what we're seeing in Australia. The increase is also similar in Europe and even in the United States as well. So yes, I know it all sounds negative. We're getting in a lot of doom and gloom about the global environment, about the, um, global warming. And I totally understand that. It's all very valid. But I think renewables will actually help to save the world. And I know that sounds optimistic but I genuinely think the planet is headed in the right direction. For the first time in modern history, coal has begun to decline in demand this year, which was not predicted by anyone, but it is happening. And from now on in, we're looking at better things to come. Let me know your thoughts. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Let us know in the comments. 